are two Americas. One is words like allegiance and republic. This America is an ideal, a dream. The other America, the other America is no longer a dream, but a nightmare. Our streets are not safe. Immorality begins to flourish. Violence pits American against American. We don't want this. How did it happen? Is there a reason we seem to have changed so much in so short a time? The first America, the dream, is still in our hearts. Out of the sea, the rocks, the forests, brave men passed down to us a revolutionary code of justice, morality, freedom. Out of a virgin land, they cut it and built it and marked it with a cross. And they died for it. For the first time in history, an idea became a nation. created equal. All men are entitled to the blessings of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. At Valley Forge they pled for it. For what? To build a free nation under God for all men. it into a wilderness, a light turned on for freedom, a golden door where government would be the responsible servant, not the tyrant, of responsible men, of all creeds, of all races, of all men. But even 
as America grew and flourished in those years, prophets arose to warn her. From Theodore Roosevelt, the things that will destroy America are prosperity at any price, peace at any price, safety first instead of duty first, and love of soft living and the get-rich-quick theory of life. warn and keep warning. What has happened to the American dream, asks novelist William Faulkner. We dozed and it abandoned us. They no longer sound the strong, loud voices unafraid. The prophets warn, but in the pace of the good life and its blessings, it seems harder and harder to listen. dedicated young leader recognizes that the people are concerned about moral decay. Seeing the danger of uncontrolled self-interest, he coins a phrase to inspire all Americans. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. He was speaking the aspirations of an honest, decent, law-abiding America, the ideal of the dream. His words are prophetic, ironic. Two years and eight months later, the young, inspiring leader is gone. becomes reality. At first, the change is not noticed. At first, people say, these are not new things, immorality, crime, violence. Americans have always played hard, lived it up, pushed their life way over the speed limit. is no sin, and besides, nobody wants a sermon, do they? The paychecks are fat. Everybody seems to be getting his. So I'll take mine, the people say. But something is missing in the big good time. Slowly, the people begin to feel it. And as I jumped off the truck, there were seven of them waiting for me. And one of them hollered, get his money, and they grabbed my apron, but I took a swing at one and hit one in the face, and I think he was bleeding. And, uh, and then they ran when they pulled off my apron. I tried to go after, but I was bleeding. I got a little dizzy, and I couldn't go any place. Slowly, they begin to understand that something must be wrong, badly wrong, at the top. New names hit the headlines, names connected to the top. The papers call it the age of the fast deal. Angle men, fixes, private clubs and private girls. Fortunes made almost overnight in public service.
of America's most famous newspapers, W.L. White's Emporia, Kansas Gazette. If a man uses public office to get financial favors to himself, then by any definition, this is corruption. Harsh words and a new kind of government. The people don't want to believe it's true. They want an ideal to inspire them, moral leadership. But when the people do protest, they get only one answer, put the lid on it. Turn off the lights at the White House. But the lights, your lights, may not now be turned off across America. One very simple reason, it's no longer safe. what you can give, but what you can take. If taking is the example, then the people take theirs, and the bottom begins to fall out across America. Demoralization. Chaos. This is the change, the other America, that the people slowly wake up to. In eight short months, there are more riots in the United States than in the last eight years. In the streets, the mob. Mobocracy. When a symbol of law and order, such as a police car or a policeman, on duty in full uniform, and when they smash a windshield of a police car or throw a brick or a bottle at a policeman, then these are not people we will sit down and reason with. These are people that we will forcibly arrest and remove from the streets of the city of Paris. The chaos isn't black or white, north or south. It isn't even planned. It just happens. Teenagers read the headlines, see the TV news. Anything goes now. <laughs> And they put their gripe into fists and rocks because the dream, the ideal, has somehow sold them out. No longer is a uniform a symbol of authority. The rules of the game have been changed now. J. Edgar Hoover says, quote, We are faced with one of the most disturbing trends I have witnessed in my years of law enforcement an overzealous pity for the criminal and an equivalent disregard for his victim, unquote. These crimes have been met by swift and necessary police action. In our estimation, this is a crime problem and not a social problem. who is handcuffed, it is the police. A police sergeant in Philadelphia protests in that city's newspaper. During the rioting, we were told our only weapon was to be our nightsticks. How the hell do we defend ourselves? We were told not to interfere with the rioting or the looting. The city gave these people a green light to go ahead. This has nothing to do with civil liberties. It's a voting gimmick. Decency should be for the small man as well as for the big man. 
the course of law, justice becomes a sick joke. New loopholes allegedly protecting freedom now turn more and more criminals loose on the nation's streets. Their freedom is a license to prowl, to ravage. In the new America that take what you can get America, every six minutes a robbery, every three minutes a crime of violence, beating, rape, murder, every 35 seconds a burglary, they rob you. Some other country? No. Here. Now. In the very shadow of the fast deal leaders, a cabinet officer's daughter is robbed, a diplomat's wife raped, a senator's secretary mugged and almost killed. The people try not to blame their leaders. The people realize the enormous problems in a modern society weren't created overnight or by any one administration. And yet good, decent, honest Americans are concerned by what now seems a vacuum of moral leadership. They see the cancer of pornography festering. want it in their homes, in the minds of their children. Why, they ask, do we have to have it on our streets? But the new America says, this is free speech. The new America prospers a multi-billion dollar business in filth. But in the new America, the ancient moral law is mocked. Nation under God. Who's he? By the new laws of the new game, out. Out of the schools, the life, the heart blood. Over the borders, dope. Narcotics traffic setting a new depraved record. And the victims too often are the most defenseless. The kids. In the schools, vandalism. On the streets, hoodlamism. Destruction of private property. The false promise, the free ride of the fast deal. And the victims of the new America are not numbers, they're human beings. Illegitimate births swell the relief rolls. Juvenile delinquency becomes a way of life. The people ask why. They don't want this. They can't believe their leaders want it. And in all truth, their leaders don't want it. But it is there. The people look to the old dream of what it used to mean to be an American. Is this where the dream has gone? And who pays for it? Out across the new America, it's the little people. And sometimes, too often, it's the kids who pay. Blame them for a lack of morality? 
They read the papers, they see the examples at the top. Parents today do not understand the problems that these youngsters are creating at these recreation areas during these demonstrations, the last school flings. It's gone to the point now, it's more than a last school fling, as you know. They destroy property, they break in places to get liquor, uh, they, are not, they, they are not chaperoned. It, it's just incredible to believe that the parents today are looking backwards and expect the clergy, the school teachers, and the police to take their place. Forget it. Relax and enjoy yourself. That's what the new America seems to answer. But some can't forget it. If the police aren't allowed to guarantee them safety, they take steps to protect themselves. Radio cars, citizen patrol sidewalks, vigilante committees, good citizens grope for a solution. Others, however, do nothing. They only stand by and watch. A man falls with a heart attack on a busy street. No one even cares to see if he's dead. Why should they? When it doesn't pay off anymore to care. Don't care, don't get involved, let it happen. Even the voices of the leaders begging peace are no longer heard. We cannot take the law into our hands, we pay officers to protect us. goods laid up for many years. Take thy rest, eat, drink, make good cheer. But God said to him, Thou fool, this night do they require thy soul of thee. This night is here, now. Two Americas, and you, you alone, standing between them. Which do you really want? Which? You've got the strongest hand in the world. That's right, your hand. The hand that marks the ballot. The hand that pulls the voting lever. Use it, will you? Use it. Tonight, there is violence in our streets, corruption in our highest offices, aimlessness amongst our youth, anxiety among our elders, and there's a virtual despair among the many. I look forward to the tomorrow in which high purpose and high morals will be restored to our high offices. I look forward to a time and a republic under God in which the American dream is still attainable and still sought. I look forward to shaping that tomorrow with you with your families and with all the people of this, our republic. It's in your hands, America. It's in your hands. Which America? Mm -hmm.